Hey everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome to the end of March update on my three different methods of winter sewing experiment. I have all of the containers that I want to share with you today and I want to give you a little update on how things have gone. So I also want to talk about my winter sewing this year. As some of you know and others if you're new here, my name is Kim by the way and I am in North Carolina zone 7B. And I tried winter sewing last year for the very first time and was absolutely astonished at the results. And if you don't know anything about it, I will link the videos below. I want you to see my original results. And so this year, I knew that I wanted to winter sew like everything, seriously everything. And so I tried it and wouldn't you know, this year is crazy. This winter has been insane. And so I've had to sort of go off the beaten path and figure things out on my own. So I've not done anything normal. Um, but then again, there's nothing normal about me. So, hey, it works. Anyway, today I want to give you an update on the three methods. So in my video, which I will link below, if you didn't see that, you got to watch that first and then come back to this one. Be sure you come back. In that one, I did three different methods. I did a OG method, which I call the milk jug method. Um, OG because that's what I did last year. Then I did a plastic bin, which you can see here. That was kind of an abrupt camera shift, so sorry about that. If you get car sick, my apologies. Hope you don't have any problems from that. And then I did a crazy method, the Ziploc bag method. You heard me right, a Ziploc bag. And so I asked you guys to vote. Tell me which you felt like would be the very best. And I don't know if it's a true experiment this year because it has been... It's, it's been such an abnormal season, but that's okay. We do have results and I'm sharing those with you today. So let's talk about our milk jug method, the OG first. Are you ready? Let's do this. So first, I have such a love for Mexican sunflower, the Tithonia. It blew my socks off last year. Could not get over how amazing it is. And so I knew I wanted to grow that. And it, I started it in a winter sewing container last year. Didn't really even know what it was. I started it at the end of January. I think it was the last one that I sewed and it germinated great. So, and let me back up. Um, I did leave these containers out and we had a freeze. And so I reported on that. That was my, um, I think I, I titled it like Dilemma, Winter Sowing Dilemma. So what I decided to do after that is I went ahead and re-sowed the seeds. I didn't open it up, I just sprinkled it in. And so I have really nothing going on here. I see a little sprout of green, so maybe something's going to happen. Maybe something is going to happen in here. My zinnias, I had perfect germination when I put them out and then they did freeze. Um, and so, like I said, I did, I did re-sow them and we have seeds or seedlings, not seeds, seedlings. So I have four plants with a few little sprouts and it's getting munched on by something. Something is enjoying the buffet of the zinnias. This is early bird zinnias. Snapdragons. These are just rock stars, okay? I have tons, 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 tons. So great germination of the Snapdragon. One of the updates I forgot to share with you was one of the lettuces, which is the butter crunch. And I think we, it's safe to say, we have great success with the OG method and the butter crunch. So and when I did my tutorial on, this is kind of a side note, I did a tutorial on what winter sewing is and how to do it. Look at the bib lettuce. It's like about to bust out of this container. Um, I did this, I believe in, in January as well. Okay, so the tried and true OG method, we have some germination. Uh, we have one container, the Tithonia, with little bits of green, but nothing yet. We're not giving up on that. For those of you that voted for the OG method, you're still in the running. Next up. All right, let's look. I'm going to give you a shift, a little gentle shift. That was pretty good, wasn't it? A little gentle shift. 
All right. Oh, I do need to tell you this. Um, I did put some uh, purple hyacinth bean in here and some tomatoes, so disregard all the other things in here uh, because they do make it look like it's germinated crazy and those are not what we're gonna count. So, drum roll please. Ta-da! Plants are my passion, singing is not, so. Okay, <clears throat> let me pull these out and let me show you one by one. So coming in, we have the Tithonia and there is nothing happening, nothing, okay? <gasps> How could I not see that little Ooh, ooh, look. I don't know how I didn't just see that. Doesn't look very healthy, does it? Okay, you can do it. You can do it, little one. You got this. Here are the other two. Nothing. This is the lettuce. Looking good. This one has continued to do really well. And then this has sprouted. The other one has done nothing. The early bird zinnias, nada. All three of them are empty. Then we have in last place, ooh, I see slugs. Slugs are not good, are they? See that slug? He's got to go. So these are my snapdragons and they look marvelous. So I want to give you a little scoop on this method. So in this container, what I have found is this container dries out so incredibly fast and they hold moisture better. Not to say they haven't dried out and I've had to water more than I ever have, ever being one other time I did winter sowing. <laughs> I'm so dramatic. Anyway, so this lid here, I have had to take off and water and had I not done that, we would have no germination whatsoever. I am not a huge fan of the plastic bin method only because it has been kind of high maintenance and the winter sewing, I, I feel like needs to be a little bit more hands off than this one has been. Um, I'm starting seeds, you know, I have seedlings inside and they are very high maintenance. So I really loved that the winter sewing was really low, low, low maintenance when it comes to starting seeds. Just my honest opinion. So the third and final method that we did in my experiment of the three ways to winter sow would be the Ziploc bag method. To me, this is the craziest method, but hey, it's a space saver and a lot easier to do than the milk jug. So I was really, really hoping this worked. And again, this winter has been abnormal, so I really can't say with certainty whether it works or doesn't. And this isn't the end of the experiment. We still have a couple of weeks to go. Starting with the Snapdragons. Not so good, right? This is the craziest one for me. This is the Tithonia. And this, this little one has just been steady. So we have one and another sprout, a little tiny sprout. The lettuce has, look at that, oh, slugs. So lettuce, rocking it, doing great. And, you know, is, is super happy. And this is my Zinnia early bird. I did re -sow these and really nothing. I have, I have uh, one little sprout and that is it. Okay, so we have looked at the three different methods and what do you think? I will say from my opinion, I still am a OG method type person. The container, as I said, is high maintenance. The bags just, 
it's like if they jostle at all, there's just, if it were hard on the sides, it seems that um, any jostling of the bag um, damages the tender plants. And so I just am not 100% on how that's going to continue. I could be wrong and I would love that I'm wrong. And, and I want to say, next year I'm going to try the Ziploc bag method again, except for this time, I'm really going to have mapped out um, an area where I want them with a sturdy structure to put the poles through and be able to leave them. I've had to move them around and that probably did a little bit of damage to my experiment. I am going to wrap this video up, but first I wanted to share with you that if you are curious about any aspect of winter sewing, I invite you to watch my videos on winter sewing and I invite you to read the comments. This community is absolutely phenomenal and every single time I've asked for advice or wisdom or guidance or what you would do, um, the viewers, you guys have made some amazing comments. So if you're new here and you know, you're curious about different aspects of winter sewing, I invite you to read the comments. Um, there's even ideas for different zones. I also wanted to thank you guys so much for sharing. You know, we all learn from each other and it is absolutely phenomenal. The one thing I did want to say, um, in, in winter sewing, you know, there's a, there's, I'm sure a right way and a wrong way, but it's an opinion. And we all learn from trials and experiments. And so I want to assure you that I will never make you feel bad for what method you, you use. Um, and I, and I hope that you have the courage, um, and that I can encourage you to try. If, if you have early germination like I did, you know, and you want to protect your, your newly grown seedlings and move them inside for a night or two or three or whatever you have to do to make sure that you have germination, I want you to know that that's okay. I always like to make my own path and I learn from trial and error and I learn sometimes the first time, sometimes it takes me two or three times, but that's, you know, at the end of the day, the goal is to have plants to plant in an inexpensive way. And that's what I love most about starting with seeds and using the winter sowing method. So I encourage you to give it a try. I encourage you to not listen to the noise of, you know, you should be doing this and you're wrong if you don't do it this way and try it and use your own common sense do what you feel is best because what I want to share with you is I had early germination because this I'm, I'm, I'm pointing back here because this this is not my experiment these are my plants that I will be planting in this garden and my goal this year was to only grow it from seed what I'm going to plant in this garden um, if at all possible and so when they started germinating early and I had um, warmer than normal temperatures, you know, my goal was to, at the end of the day, uh, when I come to April 20th, my last frost, to be able to plant what I'm growing in here and not use this as, oh, I have to do it this certain way because somebody said to. Um, I'm using common sense and I protected them. I put them in an unheated garage, um, you know, when we got in the 20s and I brought them out in the day. I've supplemental watered. I have just really babied these because at the end of the day, the goal is to have plants that you can use. And so I want to, I want to be the voice of encouragement and honestly say, you know what? It's okay. And you can try it. And if you don't get it right, that's okay. It's okay. You will, you will learn and you will do better next time. And if you don't learn and don't do better next time, that's okay too. It's okay. So I want to thank you so much for following along on this journey with me. I want to thank you for your comments and being part of this and, and placing value in your time and watching me. I, I am so grateful for each and every one of you. And I hope that you have a chance to go out and get your hands dirty today and that you enjoy wherever you are, the beauty that's around you, and that you know that I am so grateful for you. And I will see you again soon. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love that. I want to do this more full-time than ever. 
And so it takes subscribers. And so I'm going to be bold and ask you if you will subscribe. So I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in another video soon. Take care, everybody.